Oh, wow. I'll tell you. After continuously cruising for six hours straight, a good old cup of tea really perks you up again. And now, I feel like cooking something tasty. But seeing as it's the last episode of season five, I fancy making something a little bit different. Hmm. And before I start, I want to categorically state for the record that I absolutely do not eat like this all the time. And I'm actually going to be making two burgers uh, because one is a surprise for a fellow boater who's just moored up a little bit further down the canal. So first of all, we have our rolls, which are sort of cheesy rolls. They're all I could find from the local co-op. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to warm them up sort of gently in the oven a little bit later. Have some garlic, an onion, two eggs, have some seriously strong cheddar, some smoked rindless back bacon. I'm going to use one rasher cut in half per complete burger and I have around about 500 grams of 12% fat beef mince. Right there. Also some mixed baby leaf salad, there's a bit of everything in there, some ground black pepper and some co-op slowly reduced irresistible tomato and chili chutney. Now I'll begin with the onions and the garlic because they're going to be cooked slightly and then mixed in with the beef because yes I'm making my own burgers. And let's begin by dicing up the onion which is going to be cut up quite small because we want it to sort of blend in with the minced beef. And then we'll quickly chop up the garlic as well. So while they're frying, I'll begin by making the burgers. Now I don't have a big enough bowl, so I'm going to use my good old Pyrex casserole dish to mix it up instead. And to do these, it's very simple. We take our beef, and a bit of it, and break it all up between our fingers into pieces, individual strips, as I say, making four patties, as they're known. But to you and me, they're burgers. Okay, that's all broken up. And now I'm simply going to crack open and throw in a couple of eggs. We'll give the onions a quick how's your father they're coming along quite nicely actually they won't be far off and also I'm going to give it a very very tiny bit of black pepper about that should do it I'd say and in she goes and then we're gonna mix all that in And the egg, of course, will bind it all together. Now we take our onions and garlic. And 
we put them in with the mince and the egg. And we continue mixing. And that is mixed up ready. Now we need to light the pan again. And we'll add a good helping of olive oil. I'm going to get it all neat and tidy and I'm going to divide it into four quarters as opposed to three quarters. <laughs> no. Right. And then we take our first lot of mince, egg and onion mixture and we sort of swap it from hand to hand as we slowly get a burger shape. Wow, these are going to be good thick burgers. And we want to make it probably slightly bigger than the bun. And then the theory is to put it in the pan. Probably turn the heat down a little bit more really. And there's one burger. And I shall now do the same with the remaining three. There we go. Let's get the bowl out of the way. Wow. It's also important when you're doing burgers to resist sort of squashing it because that can dry them up. But I'm just giving them a gentle prod to shape them. And I'm going to leave them to gently cook away like that probably for around about 10 minutes for this side and while that's doing I'm just going to prepare a few more ingredients firstly the cheese which is going to be cut probably about a quarter of an inch thick five millimeters don't want it too thin otherwise you won't really taste it and we don't want it too thick otherwise it won't melt and I'm going to have two slices of cheese per burger so that's eight slices at least it was when I was in school last time I sliced cheese on a video it was right at the beginning when I made my legendary cheese on toast with an OXO cube. Uh, I never lived that down. Even my mother ended up believing that I only lived on cheese on toast. You won't find these in the freezer section of Tesco's. Also while I'm at it, going to do the bacon. And there's going to be half a rasher on each burger. So that's one rasher of bacon per complete burger. Now this is looking good and I think they might be ready for turning over possibly. Yeah. Like so. Wow yeah. Done absolutely perfectly on a nice dark brown on the top. Now they're done on that side I shall now place the cheese on the top and it will start to melt away. Whoa. These are taking on the smell and appearance as if it's been done at a burger van. Wow. 
So I shall now light the oven and gently warm the rolls up. And I shall slice them in half very carefully. Because the bun is the vessel for which the burger shall be presented. Now I'm going to move the burgers to the back and I'm going to take another pan and quickly fry the bacon. It's quite a military exercise this and it's getting close to dishing up time. When I was a younger lad, well, much younger than I am today, I used to travel around the country a lot, fitting patio doors. And over time, I built up almost a directory of the best burger bands on my route. Some of them were simply stunning. I would say we are pretty much there and we're ready to serve. Now I'm going to prepare the burger first of all for the boater down the towpath who's called Keith by the way and a very nice chap he is too. So we'll take our first burger. <laughs> I've suddenly realised this burger might require its own tower scaffold. <laughs> this <laughs> Still, this is what creating is all about. It's about experimenting and enjoying yourself along the way. And why not? This is a double cheeseburger, by the way, with additions. <laughs> <laughs> and if it's really necessary after all that a nice bit of lettuce stuff mixed leaves and then on goes the lid and in order to support it I was at a local Costa the other day and knowing that I was going to be doing this I nabbed some coffee stirring sticks. I name thee the CHG Burger. <coughs> May God bless her and all who eat her. Wow. I think I may have eaten just a little bit too much there but it was certainly a tasty way to end another season of Travels by Narrowboat. And a season of firsts it was. There was my first ever river, never been on a river before. And when I left Leeds and the Leeds and Liverpool Canal, I didn't know what to expect. All I knew is that the air in Calder was very wide and extremely deep, but after about a mile, and when I got to Leeds Dock and stayed a couple of nights there, it basically felt just like a canal. And then there was my first ever automated lock. And after what's literally been hundreds and hundreds of manually operated locks, large and small, winding away, heavy sluices, light sluices, huge flowing currents as you let the water in, an automated lock, you just put the key in, press a couple of buttons and it's all done for you. And it's so gentle because the rate that the water comes in or goes out is so finely controlled that you don't even know that you're going up or down in the lock. And then the big one, my first ever tidal river. Whew. Ever since I knew 
I was going to be getting onto the air and Calder and then eventually the tidal trim because bearing in mind with the hot and dry weather at the time all the canals in the north were closed and the only way to escape the north was the River Trent so I had no choice to, but to do it and once again even though it was an early start and it was dark after about four miles or so I started to relax and it didn't seem so bad I mean for sure you had the huge current flowing in behind but you can only go when the lock keeper says and that's either at an incoming tide if you're going from Kidby or an outgoing tide if you're going from Cromwell Lock and of course the added bonus of going along the tidal and non-tidal trend is that you cover so much distance in an extremely short space of time I mean at one point on the tidal trend I hit eight and a half miles an hour which on Aslan was just mind-blowing her normal cruising speed is about two and a half three at a push so to cover 24 miles in four hours on my first day on the tidal trend it was a new experience for sure well it just remains for me to say thank you to everyone for watching and thank you to all of you who've joined me during season five over on Vimeo on demand here and I'd also like to thank all my patrons and everybody who's contributed through PayPal throughout the series you guys are just awesome and it is your continued commitment that allows these videos to be made and I thank you sincerely cheers thank you everyone and I'll see you next time cheers